right so this is the last part of uh, the last video of this uh, whole course so I'm going to close this uh, course by giving you an explanation on the limited domain approach so far uh, you have learned a wide range of theories in psychology and some of those uh, are uh, interesting maybe some of those are just plainly uh, nonsense uh, but some of those I hope uh, would be helpful in understanding yourself and also understanding other people so uh, there are a uh, lots of consideration uh, from research psychologists that uh, that the old theory uh, from the uh, earliest uh, development of the field um, they might not be uh, satisfying in explaining human personality because there are lots of critics on it as I might have told you earlier about those critics especially uh, the one who is very uh, the, the the one movement that is very influential in psychology that is psychoanalysis and also uh, the uh, trade approach and but psychoanalysis nowadays it's much less popular than it was uh, several decades ago uh, because now research psychologists are more informed uh, about doing good research and how to um, actually perform uh, how to make a good inferences from the data so uh, that's why uh, psychology uh, today is much more different from what you have learned previously from the course so again uh, there are consideration from uh, research psychologists that uh, they, there might not be a global theory that could explain all aspects of human personality so it's impossible to um, to explain one uh, complex concept like personality in one global theory it just it doesn't make sense so what research psychology research psychologists uh, uh, usually do is that they focus more on one specific uh, things um, by using uh, experimental approach because uh, experimental psychologists they often uh, focus on one variable by controlling all other variable and even though this is uh, more uh, restrictive in, sc in scope so you won't see theory that is very comprehensive like psychoanalysis but it's much more reliable it uh, it backs on uh, more uh, uh, trustworthy data than the than uh, than those uh, theories that claim to be a global theory of human personality so um, psychologists nowadays they uh, their focus tend to be uh, tend to be sh shift away from the clinics from the from studying people who has personality disorder or psychological disorder uh, by seeing a more a general population of human uh, of human so that's why we focus more on doing research instead of changing human personality so the so the main aim of uh, investigating one's personality is is to gain knowledge instead of changing or intervening their personality yeah, so that's why uh, most research psychologists now they tend to be more focused on a very specific and limited area of of their investigation and uh, the proponents of this movement the limited domain approach they uh, place less emphasis less importance of the therapeutic value so we so those people they don't really have an intention to to cure people to make people better but they tend to be more like uh, they, they they want to understand human better understand the how actually our personality works uh, in order to uh, in order to to have more a better intervention a better uh, better treatment from other people so before uh, changing uh, before proposing better treatment the first thing that we need to do as a research psychologist is that understanding it uh, uh, fully before then proposing better uh, treatment for the uh, for, for certain problems so there are three uh, research psychologists that I'm going to uh, explain to you that I'm going to introduce to you and those three people are extremely popular in contemporary uh, development in psychology uh, the last name uh, is in, uh, is particularly very popular because he is the author of a bestseller uh, book that is um, I forgot the exact name of his book but it, it 
it always related with uh, happiness, finding happiness, if I'm not mistaken. And he was the president of uh, American Association of Psycholo American Psychological Association. So that's why he is very uh, popular. Um, so um, I'm going to explain to you the facets, the very uh, uh, small parts of our personality, a uh, very um, limited uh, explanation of of, why, of how our personality works. Uh, so, and there are three different concepts uh, with uh, three different um, different focus, uh, and it's better uh, explained uh, by a very simple concept that Julian Rotter will give you the concept of taking control of our lives, and Marvin Zuckerman will give you the explanation about taking chances, uh, taking opportunities uh, when you exposed by one. And the last part would be finding happiness. Yeah, so Martin Seligman will always be related with happiness. Uh, so the first concept that I'm going to introduce to you is locus of control uh, from Julian Rother. And Rother found that uh, some people uh, believe that their action, that their decision is more uh, influenced by their themselves, by themselves. Yeah, it comes from within themselves. But some people believe that their external factors, that other people, has much more influence uh, in their decision, in their behavior, in their action. So that's why he called the concept locus of control. So people who has internal locus of control, they truly believe that uh, their own action, their own decision, uh, their own behavior is more directed by their own selves, yeah, not by... Uh, outside uh, outside uh, factors, the external factors. While people who who has an external locus of control, they would uh, see themselves as a product of 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 external factors that influence their decision. So that's why they believe in fate, they believe in luck, uh, and the rewards that they receive. So that's why their behaviors are more directed to. Uh, to achieving external goals and more directed to uh, more extrinsic rewards rather than intrinsic rewards. So that's why those two people, uh, those two different types of people, they would behave, uh, they would uh, show a completely uh, different pattern because they believe in completely two different things when it comes to uh, taking control of their own lives. That would be the end of the first part of this lecture. I'm going to... Uh, um, I'm going to continue this lecture uh, by explaining the concept of sensation seeking and also finding happiness from Martin Seligman.